Jai Hind uh, viewers, welcome back to another of our episodes where we are interviewing members from our group on the completion of a, a one year of MRO Digest uh, forums. Today, we are privileged to have with us Commander Sonal Saxena. He is an MTech naval or aeronautical engineer qualified on Russian turboprops with management certification from NITIE Mumbai. He held appointments including chief manager of a, a major naval engine holding MRO and component workshop with experience in indigenization and composite repair. He was also chief manager aircraft production in naval second and third line MRO. He was a fleet program manager at aviation headquarter for uh, two aircraft fleets handling complex supply chain contracts modification and upgrade programs he was a chief engineer for three ships and a project manager for two major refits in a civil defense collaboration he was an instructor and a chief uh, training coordinator in navy's premier aviation training post graduate level institute and he was a designated Navy's technical flight safety auditor and technical examiner. So uh, Sonal has uh, joined us recently, and it's good to have young blood uh, bringing in the latest concepts and technology which goes into MRO. And uh, so now um, uh, my first uh, question to you, Sonal, is that uh, can you say a few words on uh, you know, what uh, when you joined MRO Digest forums, you know, what were the pluses? Some what, what, have you benefited in any way, or what do you think about this forum? Sonal, please. Uh, Jain, sir, and Jain to all viewers also. Uh, sir, uh, firstly, thanks very much uh, for uh, getting me on this forum, as well as uh, such a repository of uh, knowledge and experience. Uh, it's I, what I feel it's a very unique one-stop uh, reference repository uh, for A to Z of MRO in India, sir. Uh, so tapping into this experience and knowledge base by bringing so many prof professionals on board this pr single platform is actually very visionary. And uh, yourself, General Mataru, sir, having envisioned such a brilliant concept uh, and thereafter having incubated it uh, and within one year, we have actually a very good success story, sir. Such, uh, for a youngster like me, it's been a learning experience. And uh, with the uh, with my experience, what I have been able to gain over the years in service, as well as in my profession, uh, it's a very good opportunity for me to disseminate and share with all uh, this experience and uh, knowledge, sir. So it's a very big thanks, sir for the, this opportunity. Uh, the MRO Digital uh, uh, perform uh, Forums uh, is already becoming a visionary reference for professional in all fields. It's not only uh, the specific uh, technical uh, fields of defense. It's of all fields we've had uh, professionals coming and joining us or taking reference from what is being discussed from a wide variety of fields. I specifically like to mention that many professional discussions steered by you and structured uh, very wholesomely. Uh, the framework that comes out is it discusses all aspects in that one single discussion that comes out. So uh, from the grassroots to the complete uh, uh, a solution oriented uh, framework that is brought out in every discussion that I have attended uh, as part of uh, either the speaker or, uh, uh, as part of the panel or as part of just the listener, sir. So, uh, hardiest congratulations, sir, for completing one year and uh, steering it in such a beautiful manner to such heights. And I definitely wish uh, this forum becomes a pilot uh, organization for uh, and a think tank uh, for the country's uh, bright future in uh, developing MRO industry in every field, sir. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sonal. And it's great to have you as a member. Uh, in our group, as I mentioned, uh, you bring in you know the latest experience. And recently, I we had the interview with uh, Mr. N. B. Singh, who's our patron, and he also you know he stressed on this aspect that uh, M. R. O. professionals who are fully rounded M. R. O. professionals, for example, the way you have got experience from the armed forces, who uh, as veterans can really um, be. Uh, very of great help to industry uh, in many ways uh, because of their very close understanding of complex uh, systems and he gave examples of how in other countries this is exactly what has happened and that has allowed them to raise the level of their uh, defense industrial uh, base to considerable heights so there are uh, uh, many opportunities this platform was uh, essentially created uh, only for uh, giving a place for mro professionals to talk about their profession because it's a complex area and to be honest with you though i spent 40 years in this specific area in the indian army when i when this platform started and i started hearing uh, all the eminent members uh, who joined us and started speaking every day has uh, for myself for me also it's been a learning experience to be honest with you and there's every day you learn something new and and it's good to be talking about uh, this because uh, veterans carry a wealth of knowledge and uh, if we can uh, bring it together and contribute to the uh, you know enhancement of our country's comprehensive national park then uh, you know one could uh, feel that uh, yes uh, it's we are doing something worthwhile and some amount of uh, things have happened and some impact has been there from the articles and videos which uh, you have just mentioned so um, uh, so now, now that you have uh, been with us for, uh, you know for some time participated in a panel discussion also participated in other panel uh, discussions as participant uh, can you uh, you know emphasize on uh, how mros may be are an opportunity you know and uh, Uh, you know including maybe you could talk about uh, setting up of uh, equipment mros and you know with your experience in marine and aviation domains sonal please sir uh, india as a country has a huge potential and it's a untapped market actually in some of the fields where is uh, where there is big technology involved uh, it's uh, india has resources of manpower india has uh, as a country has resources of brains uh, and uh, combined uh, all of them some of the fields especially aviation and marine which uh, i specifically have experience in in heavy engineering also uh, setting up of mros and uh, tapping into international market uh, is a huge potential that is available and uh, we can uh, countries like the middle east are uh, have uh, gained a lot from the aviation sector uh, european countries have been controlling the marine sector uh, but uh, now marine some businesses coming in when even the us defense ships uh, got uh, major repairs done in india uh, extended repairs including dry docking and all which is heavy engineering work and includes a lot of technology and uh, then uh, uh, shipyards like cochin shipyard the manufacturing unmanned uh, uh, merchant uh, vessels uh, they are uh, that's uh, on the pipelines now some contracts are getting signed not only in defense but even in merchant shipping this kind of a concept is coming in sir so and similarly in uh, aviation uh, we have the middle east the singapore and hong kong uh, what business they are giving to the international market i am sure india can uh, as a country can definitely give much more uh, competitive uh, business uh, to the world and this inter international market is that what uh, we need to tap in the mro sector uh, for the country sir for this uh, mro business to come in i think uh, there are three four major things that uh, right now that we need to look into uh, i think if we can uh, establish our reputation in that uh, for the first is the uh, quality that we need to look into 
uh, the quality level of quality uh, that we deliver uh, it can be substantially enhanced to match the European sector now. And we have the technology to it. We have the skill to it. Uh, we, uh, we from the defense forces have worked on a lot of foreign equipment, uh, cutting edge technology, latest in the line. And uh, even in the civil sector, people have got trained outside in, and have been dealing with the, that kind of machinery. Uh, latest machinery. So here, if I, uh, if we can get uh, quality of that standard, we, that's the only thing uh, that uh, the international market requires. I think we can divert a lot of business uh, to the country. Similarly, uh, the standards have to be established. Right now, we are following international standards. Uh, they are being uh, again. Uh, moderated to the country's requirements, to the individual uh, uh, industry's requirements. But if we can, uh, the international standards, we can upgrade and uh, include them in our work culture, then uh, that will also bring in a lot of the international market uh, to us uh, in the MRO sector. Uh, third thing, a very important thing that uh, we also had a discussion uh, the, a good deliberation during one of the panel discussions that is life cycle management sir now as brought out in that uh, discussion which was even a learning experience for me uh, that uh, from the birth to the grave uh, life cycle management of product that needs to be done uh, is already this concept is working out in the international arena so that same concept uh, and it's many of them sitting in international arena in the topmost positions are uh, Indians or Indian origins that are developing this concept and uh, implementing it uh, to the T. So the same thing, if we can, we have that brains, we have that mindset. Uh, all we need to do is uh, introduce this concept uh, of life cycle management into our work culture and in all the products that we are developing. I, I'm sure uh, the international market uh, will be ours. Uh, nobody can match our uh, skills and uh, our uh, brains. Uh, the lastly that I'll uh, look at is life, uh, as part of life cycle management only is ESG that we need to look at and uh, include it in our uh, work environment totally. Uh, sim uh, all this, as I said now, uh, includes costs and when you include this cost to uh, uh, finally it comes to uh, the dollar value or the money value that we uh, produce and uh, the uh, and we can deliver to the market so all this also comes at a cost and then uh, still we can i have a strong belief that we can give competitive rates uh, to the international arena and uh, we can deliver much better uh, in uh, all these uh, parameters, much better performance, and uh, we should be able. That's where uh, we should be able to capture the international market in MRO sector of uh, heavy engineering. Uh, so that is my uh, take on uh, MRO's development in the country. And uh, uh, as again we have discussed in many of the forums, uh, we from the defense sector have uh, worked uh, and uh, we have. Uh, we have these values imbibed in us. We have uh, worked with this documentation. We can develop it. Uh, we have developed SOPs, the kind of details that we go into. Uh, so this is a huge potential uh, that we can uh, we, uh, we can be tapped as, as well as we can individually contribute in developing this complete industry uh, in the country. Sir. Well, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Sonal. For giving the complete points, also the many areas where we can work. Uh, so I we had I've, I've had this. You know, we were discussing the other day, and you have a lot of experience in um, supply chain management. So yes, especially in high tech uh, spares, and uh, so uh, can you talk about this and touch upon the uh, MROs? Uh, you know, to eco how they can economize their costing and um, things of that uh, type. Sonal, please. So, uh, 
on this uh, yes uh, i had a lot of uh, uh, guidance from you on this particular topic sir but uh, as, and along with the that uh, in supply chain uh, there was uh, some management study that we had done at uh, niti mumbai where i did a course uh, management course and uh, the techniques that are used in supply chain management modern day supply chain management is uh, essentially required to get your cost of uh, inventory holding as well as inventory carrying uh, down and especially in uh, high end sectors each component cost is pretty high whether it is carrying cost or holding cost so it is on a cut to cut basis or as you say just in time uh, concept that we use uh, that uh, the component should come just in time when it is required so you don't have any carrying cost you don't have any holding uh, and it should be fitted and utilized the immediate utilization should be taking place of that component and uh, there is a limited supply chain of uh, limited sources that are available uh, if you have look at a complicated uh, fuel pump of a aircraft or a gearbox component of a marine engine there will be it will uh, the manufacturer will also supply it as per demand which is very rare uh, not rare actually very uh, low demand uh, so everybody wants to cut down on those costs now if we can develop a supply chain system wherein especially on uh, we have been doing uh, the preventive plan preventive maintenance and maintenance uh, schedules that are there uh, so based on that to so break uh, other than breakdown maintenance uh, we if we can uh, for the plan maintenance especially if we can work out a good supply chain uh, i think uh, the costing of our uh, overall costing can drastically come down uh, in aviation the components uh, stocking up is being done at very limited uh, places in the world actually uh, the just, uh, complex components like landing gears your engines your uh, fuel pumps hydraulic pumps etc and airframe components also uh, so they they are being stocked at very limited places in the world so the world has already started following a bit of their this supply chain the oems which are the aircraft manufacturers generally who have their subsidiaries subsidiary comp supply companies who are doing it so they are tying up and uh, it's being synchronized with the aircraft requirements all over the world but uh, we need a much more powerful tool which we need a much more powerful uh, supply chain uh, cycle uh, and a uh, infrastructure that we should have uh, we need a regulatory framework because uh, here in components actually will be uh, traveling cross country cross borders uh, so we need to match up with the international framework of regulatory uh, bodies wherein export import rules also have to be suitably framed up uh, so uh, it's this particular supply chain management of aviation components or marine components or even any other heavy engineering components uh, if we can uh, match up with a tool and uh, a framework it uh, will definitely benefit and reduce drastically cutting down on our co costs we can i think uh, reduce up to maybe 25 to 30% the cost of overall production if we can uh, just control our inventory on this front so that is where sir uh, supply chain will play a very important role and uh, we all need to look into it and uh, do some serious uh, infrastructure build up on this sir uh, thank you very much uh, sonal and uh, great to have you as a part of our uh, group Sure. And we look forward to you know interacting with you in uh, many of our discussions. You are welcome to suggest also what discussions we should have. So, uh, viewers, with that we come to an end of this particular interaction with one of our members. We'll bring you more interactions. We thank you for uh, joining us, and uh, there are links to certain resources which we have in the show notes below, including uh, the uh, the LinkedIn profile of. Uh, Commander uh, Sonal Saxena, you can, you know, get in touch with him. 
uh, if you like our content, what we are doing, then do subscribe to us. And as I said, you we look forward to having you back with us in the in future. We are, as I mentioned earlier, a, a, a platform for MRO professionals. So uh, it's free to be a part uh, member with us. And you're most welcome to, if you're an MRO professional and you feel you have got something to contribute, uh, we'll be quite uh, delighted to have you as our member. To, so just uh, you know, use any of the links below to message us and we will send you an invitation. And uh, with that, uh, I'll thank uh, Commander Sonal Saxena for an excellent interaction. And uh, once again, I'm thanking you, the viewers. I, we will bring this particular interaction to a close. Jai Hind.